What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are bringing you guys one of the strongest evolutions for ranked battles. We got ourselves an Espeon team for ranked regulation each. Now, when it comes to Espeon, this Pokemon can surprisingly do a lot of damage, which is why we're pairing it up next to Indeedee with the Psychic Surge so we can rip Expanded Force, hopefully grabbing you guys some wins. But let's talk about this Espeon build. It is a straight Psychic type with the Psychic Terror type, so you know, you get that double damage with Expanded Force. It also has Magic bounce which is a really cool ability and the twisted spoon as item to boost psychic damage even more it's got protect it's got shadow ball and dazzling gleam for two coverage moves and like we mentioned one of the strongest psychic moves of all time expanding force we also got indeedy on today's team to set that terrain with the mind plate to boost psychic damage for this pokemon it also has expanded force just like espion so we can spam it all day long it's got dazzling gleam it's got helping hand and it has got protect our four other Pokemon on today's team feature Sneasler, Golden Go, Tauros, and Talonflame. Sneasler going to be a great physical attacker with that Psychic Seeds and Unburden to boost its speed and its defense stats. We also got Golden Go, it can set up Nasty Plot, do big time special attack damage. You got Choice Band Tauros, doing good damage and intimidating opposing Pokemon. And then Talonflame with Gale Wings, you can set up Tailwind. It also has Quick Guard, really strong Pokemon all around. Guys, run around the team for yourself. Rental code is at the top right hand corner. And if you do enjoy today's video, don't forget to smash that like button for me and subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's hop into match number one showcase and espion in ranked regulation H. First match on its way, and I wish we had an ice type Pokemon. We're going up against three dragon types, but luckily we have Espeon with Dazzling Gleam. So I'm gonna be rocking out with that Pokemon, looking to grab some wins here in match number one. They also have Golden Go, they have Skull Villain and Torkoal alongside with the three dragons. Um, Sun could be a little annoying, but I feel as terrain is not a problem for us. So we could just go into Indeedee alongside with Espeon. I do like that. I do like that. Let me see Indeedee's moveset. It does have Fairy Terror with Dazzling Gleam, which I actually really like a lot. So I am going to go both of these guys easily. Definitely easily. In the back end, I could go into like Intimidate Tauros, which isn't bad. You got Aqua Jet, you got Raging Bull, you got Wave Crash Close Combat. Won't be bad for dealing with that. Uh with that Hydrogon, but I kind of need something to deal with that Golden Go. Now, Golden Go is a little weird Pokemon. I mean, the poison moves won't hit it, close combat won't hit it with uh, Sneasel, so we might just want to go into like late game Talonflame, or we could just go like Golden Go of our own. I think Golden Go can work wonders here. I am scared of the Torkoal, but we'll deal with that if the time comes. So I'm going to go Golden Go late game. I forgot to click the Tauros. We got our four. Let's lock it in. Looking for a win here, match number one. <clears throat> I feel like this one's going to be tough. I mean, if they want to lead dragons, I, I again, I do not mind just ripping Dazzling Gleams with Indeedee or, uh, or Espeon. I can always just, like, Fairy Terror with Indeedee. Because this Indeedee is all about attacking. It is all about attacking. And they're going to end up going into Dragapult and Skull Villain, which I do not mind ripping Expanded Forces here. That's something I don't mind. That is something I do not mind. They could have, hmm, Ghost Move is looking a little scary. Ghost Move is definitely looking a little scary. Um, I could go into that, but I'm just going to go into double expanded force. Actually, I could just protect Espeon. I feel like they see Espeon as a as a big time threat. Yeah, they definitely see Espeon as a big time threat. If Dragapult's going to use a ghost move, it's going to be an Espeon, considering DD does have that normal typing. So I'd rather just protect Espeon, read out a turn, hopefully get off an expanded force here and do some nice damage. Chip it around. Get chipping around. So I can always swap Espeon save for later. Like The terrain's not going anywhere for five turns. So we'll see what he wants to do. Skull Villain looks like it's going to use like Spicy Extract, which is a decent combo. It's actually pretty strong. But let's see how this one plays out here. So we're just going to protect the Espeon. Hopefully make a read here. And he's going to go for a U-turn pivot, which we end up blocking, which is good news. And indeed, you do outspeed Skull Villain. You do, which is gorgeous. Expanded Force flies. It's going to be some nice damage across the board. Oh, that's beautiful damage across the board. Skull Villain brings out his Focus Ash. And... He's going to double down into Espeon here. That's massive. So double down into Espeon is huge for us. That is huge for us. They could have Hydreigon here. I am just going to go into a Dazzling Gleam instead, just in case they want to swap into like Hydreigon or a different Dragon type. And I think now is a good turn for us to maybe swap into... I don't want to swap into Tauros. I think I'd rather swap into Golden Go. Because if he's U-turn pivoting here, it'd only be right for us to just go into you. But you could be going for a Dark Move. I'm going to save our Tauros, so you know what? I'm just going to go with the uh, Golden Go here. So I'm using Espeon right now. It's just like a decoy, pretty much. So they're looking at it. They're like, okay, Espeon's going to attack. Espeon's going to attack. 
Nah, you know, I'm just you guys can attack me. I'll protect. I'll swap it out all day. This indeed he's doing some big time damage. But that's what I really like about this combo is we have two legitimate Pokemon that could do so much damage that they, they they really don't know what to do. Double expanded force going crazy. So I'm gonna swap into Golden Go here. He's gonna end up protecting the skull villain. I think he tries to U-turn pivot here. I really do, right? Yeah. And he U-turn wow. That one shots me? That just one shot at me. That's crazy. That just one shot at me. Okay. Let's see what he's going to go into. I was really not expecting that to one shot me. You turn on. It's got to be choice ban, right? It's got to be choice ban. He's going to bring out the harsh sunlight. We can now bring out, I guess. I guess Tauros here. <laughs> well, I could just go back into Espeon. Yeah, I might as well go back into Espeon here. I might as well just go right back into Espeon. Maybe just like terrestrialize our, our what's it called? Our Golden Go. And drop another Expanded Force. Yeah, so we'll go Expanded Force. We will terrestrialize and we will set up a Nessie Bot. Actually, do I want to set up a Nessie Bot? Not really. Not really. I could just Shadow Ball with a Terra. The thing is, I am terrified of terrestrializing and then having to deal with Dragapult. I mean, I have Aqua Jet to deal with Dragapult. I think Terrasalize is actually going to be the play. So I'm going to Terrasalize or Golden Go. We're going to double down into this Torkoal. And we'll see how he wants to play it. Because we know he has Dragapult, low HP. I have Aqua Jet to kind of deal with that. But the sun is like, eh. The sun's real iffy. The sun is real iffy. And we know his Choice Ban. Like, U-Turn without the Choice Ban is not KOing me there. It wasn't Stab. It was just monstrous amounts of damage. But we're going to Thrasize into Dragon Typing just to neutralize some of this fire damage coming through. We'll see how, how we can play this one. So Overheat's going to launch. Nice little Terra on our end. We're able to soak that Overheat, which is good. He's going to drop his special defense stats. And Expanded Force is going to launch. So Skull Villain's gone. Torkoal's going to take some nice damage here. Oh my god, we got a crit. Thank you. Thank you! That's actually a big time crit for us. So we, get, we pull off a crit. Um... And now he's forced to throw out Dragapult. And who else? Is it another dragon? This is where things can get scary. This is where things can get scary. So we have Protect on both of these Pokemon. Um, I think Protecting is not the call here. I think letting Golden Go probably die out here is probably the call. And the reason I say that is because if I Protect Golden Go, double, I think they're going to go for Dragon Darts. So double Dragon Darts will just launch into this slot. And Golden Go is their last Pokemon. I have the Bull. Bull's not bad here. The bull's not bad, but I gotta go for expanded force. I know it's gonna be not very effective, but I have to take out this. What's it called? I have to take out this dragon pool. I have to go for make it rain. And I have to go for expanded force. So we have to get rid of this dragon pool if we want to shot out win this match. Not a bad match so far. So Espeon chilling here. And DD dying out one shot was really a heartbreaker. Out comes their terrestrialization. And I think it's got to be Golden Ghost Steel. No, it's going to be Dragapult. Maybe Dragapult Dragon. Yep. Espeon, I need you outspeeding. I need Espeon to outspeed here. I really do. At least the Golden Ghost. Not the... Not the I know it's not outspeeding the Dragapult. So here's Dragon Darts. This is why I didn't want to protect. Because one's going to take out you, and the other's going to do a huge chunk of damage. The other's going to do a huge chunk of damage. Espeon, you outspeed our Golden Ghost. Can you outspeed their Golden Ghost? Because this shouldn't KO you. This KOs you, I'm going to be very upset. Wow. Okay, and you outspeed. That's huge. So we get rid of Dragapult. We're going to be able to chunk up a respectable amount of damage onto that Golden Go. And hopefully it's going for Make It Rain. If it goes for an Pot, we outspeed it. But hopefully it goes for Make It Rain, if anything. Just a minus one in special attack. That goes for Shadow Ball. Smart play. So Shadow Ball KOs my Espeon. And it's now a 1v1 situation. I get to bring out the Bull. The problem here is... Sunlight. I don't think we can win this match. We are choice banding. Do I choice ban in the wave crash or raging bull? What is my play here? This is actually brutal. They do intimidate it, which is gonna do nothing. Our sunlight two turns. I got a choice into the move. Hmm. Wave crash is gonna take recoil. That's the only problem. Raging Bull gonna outspeed. That's the real question. Are we outspeeding here with Tauros? 167, yeah, we're outspeeding. We are for sure outspeeding. Um, hmm. 
I think two wave crashes can do damage. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I don't think one Shadow Ball is gonna KO me. I really don't. Let's see how much damage we're doing here. Okay, we just gotta soak this shot. Shadow Ball? Yeah, there's Shadow Ball. Can we soak this? You're not choice, are you? You might be choice. What a match. <laughs> what a match, yo. Big time damage from Golden Go. GG's. What a first match. GG's to our opponent. That one came down to the wire. Maybe we shouldn't have wave crash, considering we took some recoil damage, and that recoil damage could have been enough for us to soak up the Shadow Ball. I mean, two Rage Bulls probably would have got the work done, but the Sunlight also doing us dirty there. We're hopping into our second match. Going up against two Dark types. Can get very annoying, especially with King Gambit and Incineroar. They also have... Garchomp, they got Amoongus, they got Salamence, and they got Whimsicott. Now, King Gambit's going to be rather annoying here. Let's be honest here. King Gambit is going to be super annoying. Same thing with Incineroar. Now, do I want to lead these two? I think I'd rather just bring them in the back end and maybe just go Sneasler and Indeedy here just to get things started. I mean, they could intimidate Sneasler, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I do like Tauros here. And I think I like Espeon for late game. So that is exactly what I'm going to do here. Let's see what they end up leading. Because I just feel like these dark types can really do me dirty. But yeah, that first match came down to the wire. Really wish we would have grabbed ourselves a win there in match number one. But it's all good. Still solid match all around. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the battles. Um, two dark types, man. That's the only problem. When you're running like expanded force and like psychic types, like dark types just shut you down. They just shut you down. Especially like Incineroar. Considering Incineroar is like... One of the best competitive, if not the best competitive Pokemon of all time. So, dealing with Incineroar in general, dealing with Incineroar when you're using Psychic Spam teams, it's just a tough time. But King Gambit's going to come out here alongside with Whimsy. Okay, so Whimsicott's going to come out here. Dark-type is looking a little scary. Um, I can close combat down this King Gambit if I want to. That might be my play. That just might be my play. I'm going to outspeed it. I got a nice little special defense boost. They can't sucker punch. I had dire call as well. I mean, we're just going to close combat. Try to rip up into that. So I'm going to close combat and might as well just expand and force this Wimscott down. Because if he wants to trash size King Gambit, expanded force is going to fly and hit it hard as well. So I like this. You could go for Tailwind. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could go for Tailwind. But I'm still hoping like Sneasel can outspeed after Tailwind. There's a possibility of that because King Gambit's. On the slower side, let's be honest here. It's like higher slower side, if that makes sense. It's not mid, but it's not super low. But we're going to see a Terra type pop out here. Turn one from King Gambo. So Gambo's going to get the Terrestrialization. It is a nice little dark type, so. Alright, that's fine. Expanded Force still isn't going to hit it, but Close Combat's still going to be super effective. It's going to launch. How much damage are we doing? We're dropping it. That's beautiful. See you later, Terra. See you later, King Gambit. That's a huge play for us. And they didn't even, they chose not to pop a Tailwind. So are they going for like Moonblast here? Trick, there's no way you're going for Trick Room. No way you're going for Trick Room, are you? Now you're going for Daz and Gleam. So Gleam's going to fly. I mean, we soak rather well. Expanded Force launches behind it. And that should sash you up or KO you. Sash you up. All right. Hot start for us. We like this. We like this. So now I have Espeon. I could bring out Espeon now. Um, I could swap Sneasel. But right now we have Speed. So they're going to set up a Tailwind. We're going to allow it. And Salamence is going to come out here. So they're going to intimidate me. That's no big deal. Um, I think swapping Sneasel might be my play. I could intimidate him. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap it to the bull. You might, you're probably physical attacking. And I'll just go for a Dazzling Gleam here. Considering... Actually, will Dazzling Gleam do more than Expanded Force? Dazzling Gleam, super effective. That's base 160 power because it's doubled. Expanding Force. It's doubled in the terrain. And it's stabbed. This is going to do more damage than Dazzling Gleam. Crazy enough. Crazy enough. So we'll swap Sneasler. We will save it for later. Our defenses were dropped due to close combat. We know Wimscott's going to be setting up a Tailwind. So we'll just get rid of it here with Expanding Force. And Intimidate's going to fly. So hopefully Salamence is a physical attacker just to negate some damage. And there's the Tailwind, like I said. And Salamence, what you got cooking for us? Because you're going to have speed here. You're going to go for a Heat Wave. That's, that's fine. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that because my Tauros soaks. And Expanding Force now flies out of your Chaos Whimscott. Does monstrous damage into Salamence. I kind of like where we're sitting. I kind of like where we're sitting. 
kind of like where we're sitting. We got Salamence low. We still have Espeon for late game. We have Sneasel with a decent amount of HP. And Amoongus is going to be the final Pokemon. Who is slower than us. Actually, yeah, you should still be slower than us. And honestly, we should just wave crash you down just to make sure you go down. And you have no terror. You're going to be weak to expand it for. So I wouldn't be surprised if we cancel the match. I wouldn't be surprised here. So first match came down to the wire. We ended up losing. Now the second match, we are just kicking it. It's so big when they Terrasilize turn one and you just get rid of it. But Heat Wave launches. Indeed, he does die out here, which is why we want to Wave Crash into the Salamence. I'm really hoping this can do enough damage just to finish it off. Which I think it should. I know it's not very effective, but still, Stab Choice Band. Yeah, it's plenty of enough damage. So we get rid of you. You can put my Taurus to sleep. I really don't care. I'm just going to bring out Espeon and win this game. Simple enough. There's a Spore. Always got to love the Spore. Always got to gotta love the Spore, man. Even when I have this match in the bag, I'm still getting spored. So now we can bring out Espeon. They're going to see Espeon. They're going to be like, oh my god, this is officially over now. Even though it was over like 15 turns ago. And they're going to run the match. So, pretty simple win for us. Pretty simple win for us. Once we got rid of that King Gambit, they were really in shambles. So, there you go. I'm curious to see if they do cancel the match. Or are they like, hey, I can spore 15 times. Maybe palm puff my way to victory here. That'd be hilarious. But you're not even going to be able to get off a spore. You're just dead. Yeah, see, they're going to stay in here. Espeon is just going to drop Expanded Force. Stab, super effective in terrain with Magic Spoon. Get this thing on out my face. Final match on its way. And we have ourselves a tough one. We're sitting one and one, looking for a winning record. T-Tar, though. Dark-type Pokemon can set the weather. We have no weather control. We have a lot of Psychic types. That's not good. We're going to need a way to deal with that. They also have Extra to pair up with the T-Tar, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, by the way. I probably said that like 1,500 times across this channel. They have Sinisha, they have Primarina, Dragonite, and Volcarona. All right. I got Intimidate Tauros, which could work well. I think I'd rather bring that in for late game, or I should say back in so I could just like swap. But I wouldn't mind just going like in DD Espeon. I really wouldn't mind that because I can always just go like Fairy Terror and swap into Tauros if they want to go like T-Tar Extra. Which is totally cool for me. So I'm going to go still into my Psychic Squad. They have no terrain, which is beautiful. I'm going to bring Tauros late game. And do I go Sneasler here? Looking at this team, Sneasler can do monstrous damage into Prima Arena. Into T-Tart and extra with close combat. Sinisha with Dire Claw. We got Acrobatic Steel with Volcarona. Yeah, you know what? Sneasler, get on over here. Get on over here. We're looking for that winning record. We're 1-1. One one. Solid matches so far in today's video. Looking to use Espeon. One last time before, you know, I take like a three month hiatus on Espeon. I feel like I use it like every like three to six months. But it's just one of those Pokemon. Like it's off meta. You won't see it too much. It's still a lot of fun to use. So we'll use it every here and there. Volcarona comes out here with Dragonite. And I don't mind this. I mean, again, you could swap into T-Tar if you want to. Could definitely swap into T-Tar. I might Terrastalize. And just Fairy Dazzling Gleam. Alongside with an Expanding Force. This kind of gives us two ways. Like, if you swap into T-Tar, we're still dealing a lot of damage. But at the same time, like, Expanding Force is going to fly and do big time damage as well. I like it. You can't e speed me, which is good. I can see the T-Tar swap all day here. Nope, no swap. I'm cool with that. I'm so cool with that. We're going to get this Fairy Terror cooking. Hopefully, we're going for like, a Dragon move into, into Indeed. That'd be nice. Wow, double expanded force would have just worked wonders here. Would have been awesome. Would have been beautiful. So we go in with the fairy terror. Expanding force. Espeon's going to outspeed. Volcarona taking monstrous damage. And Fiery Dance is going to launch into Indeedee, correct? Doing respectable damage. And Indeedee outspeeds. Can I pick up the double KO here? I know we're KOing Dragonite, but Volcarona? Sadly, no. Luckily, Espeon outspeeds that. So, I mean, I can get rid of it next turn. I can get rid of you next turn. I like that. I'm guessing they gotta have T-Tar extra for late game. They really gotta. I feel like that has to be a must. I feel like that has got to be a must. And if they do, I mean, I could just... I think I still gotta spam Expanding Force. Just in case he Terrasilizes, right? You gotta have T- There's no way you don't have T-Tar extra right here. There's no way. There's no way. That's like the main core of your team and you're not gonna bring it. I'd be so upset if it's not T-Tar Extra. There it is. There it is. There you go. There she is. We knew you were coming out here. 
We knew you were coming. Um, I think the same thing works fine for us. I think we just go Daz and Gleam, and we just rip an Expanded Force. Like, Expanded Force will cover the Volcarona, and it has no effect on T-Tar. But if this Pokemon does decide to Terrastalize, that's some big-time damage for us. And then if it doesn't decide to Terrastalize, we have Indeedy ripping Daz and Gleams with Fairy Terror. So I'm a fan of this. I'm a fan of this, for sure. For sure. So, I mean, we got a lot of we got a lot going on here. So, I wasn't even going to lead this Psychic Terrain combo, but it, after I thought about it, I was just like, this actually works pretty well. The Expanded Force is going to fly out here. It's going to take out Volcarona. Bye-bye. See you later. And then my boy, Indeedy. Going to get after it, outspeed him with a Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam going to launch. Bop, do respectable damage. That's in a Sandstorm, and chances are you're probably, what's it called as well? Ouch, that hurt. You're probably uh, assault vested as well. You gotta be assault vested. And he said bye bye to my Espeon. So Buff is gonna fly through it. Extra is going to launch here. He's gonna probably Iron Head me. But I like the Tauros play here. So now we got Tauros. We got Sneasler. And after his turn, Sneasler's unburdened can pop with the Psychic Seeds. Because how many turns will I have to train? Probably two? After this, I believe indeed he's just dead this next turn. Let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. No Excadrill. Wow. That actually. Does that benefit us? I don't know. Actually, a little bit. A little bit because indeed he's now fastest. Or faster than their Pokemon. So I'm going to go Expanded Force. Give me no reason not to. And if you want to Terrestrialize, then Expanded Force is going to hit you. So there's Wave Crash. This should KO you with Choice Band. I wasn't going to go Close Combat, but Wave Crash was just a simpler play. And yeah, then now that's game. Thanks for playing. GG's. Pretty easy match in match number three for us. We just killed it in today's video. Well, or two and one for today's video. Expanded Force can come out here. Bring you down to low yellow. Moonblast is going to take out Taurus. We know that for a fact. But I'm cool with that. I am definitely cool with that. Indeedy with the Terrestrialization. I feel like anytime I use like male Indeedy, people are just not expecting the damage output that it does. So they kind of like don't pay attention to it. And then it turns around and bites them. Because it just does so much damage. Yeah, 2 and 1 for today's video. That first match came down to the wire today. Our opponent ended up taking it. And then match number 2 and 3, we kind of just steamrolled our opponents here. But now I can bring out Sneasler, pop the seeds, get Unburdened. We know we're out speeding. I can just spam Expanded Force. And I can go into Dire Claw here. So let's see what he ends up doing. Battle is canceled. GG's. There you go. For all my Evolution fans, there's Espeon for today's video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. I absolutely love using this Pokemon, especially because it's an off-meta Pokemon, and we use it to its fullest potential, going 2-1, grabbing two wins, and using it in all three matches today. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spend some positive day, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.